Hello, I am Nicolas Aguilopoulos, a neuroscientist working in Germany, and I would like to go very briefly over the role of the neuromodulators in our brain. Uh, there is a little bit of misunderstanding, misinformation, and confusion about what the neuromodulators do. Let me start by saying that I'm doing this just totally on the spare of the moment. I have no script. And um, the uh, starting point of any discussion about the brain or oh, to first consider what the brain does. The brain is the communication system of uh, our organisms. So we communicate inside, so the various organs and sense organs and uh, muscles and uh, endocrine organs and so on communicate through the nervous system and the brain is the central hub of the nervous system. Uh, and in that light, everything uh, can be seen from an information theoretical perspective as being um, information acquisition uh, and that means storage, learning, knowledge, uh, storage, and retrieval, the retrieval of that storage, which is sometimes called memory. And by memory, we don't uh, necessarily mean uh, the various episodic events, the various episodes in your life, the various circumstances, like you met your mother, you talked to your father, you went out with some friends of yours. So we, it's not just that. Everything is memory. Uh, what we hear, what uh, we see and so on is also memory, strange as that may sound. And to make you really understand that, uh, because it has become intuitive to us, so we hear and learn and we don't think about it because we learned those things when we were children. And, and so if you can learn something during your life, such as to play a musical instrument or to uh, listen to foreign language, then it's very difficult. You cannot do it. It makes no sense. A foreign language will make no sense. I mean, the sounds are there but the meaning is not um, and so the sounds of course you learn them through early childhood but the meaning of what is being said you've never learned and so uh, because you don't always know it you don't have memory of it it has no meaning and the same is true with everything in life everything we see we walk down the street we see some buildings we see the street we think you know we've never seen this before but we have images of streets and buildings and so on automatically they fill up our, our view uh, because we know what buildings look like what streets look like and so on there are experiments that show that uh, that you don't really pay any attention uh, necessarily when you walk around the street and of course you can have accidents and so on but there are experiments that show that uh, unless you pay attention to something you don't um, really perceive it and you may be listening to a friend he speaks bad English but unless you pay attention to his English you understand perfectly so to come back to the neuromodulators then they can be seen in the context of information processing of information acquisition and memory and so uh, what do the various neuromodulators do let's start with the easy ones a little calling perhaps is the easiest one it's uh, uh, one of the uh, most ubiquitous in all organisms uh, it appears very early in evolution and its main uh, so role seems to be information acquisition now there are some confusion because people have confused memory with learning but if we put aside memory and we just concentrate on learning information acquisition acquisition of knowledge then uh, uh, a still calling has to do with that. It's been um, uh, released when things have been learned. And uh, if you uh, repeat the same thing, the same information and so on, uh, then it gets released all the time and it helps you memorize that. Um, the other important ones are noradrenaline, uh, serotonin, and dopamine among the classical neuromodulators and so neuroadrenaline uh, similar to adrenaline seems to be released in uh, so-called stressful situations they reinforce uh, things that have to do with the learning again uh, that are paired with uh, sort of stressful situations whether they have to do with sport I mean, sport uh, requires you know sort of certain arousal levels uh, so does fear and danger and so anything uh, or pain so anything related to these sorts of arousing sort of stimuli 
stressful stimuli um, uh, release neuroadrenaline and so you pay attention, you pay more attention to what's going on then and so you reinforce any uh, sort of learning that happens around that time because these are important situations that you should be very attentive to and uh, so that's the role of neuroadrenaline briefly speaking. Uh, the third, uh, perhaps um, the third easiest, so slightly more difficult one to understand is dopamine. Dopamine seems to be involved in situations um, that have to do with learning what's good and what's bad. Um, and so once you've learned and associated something as being uh, positive or negative, then neurodrain is no longer being released, it would appear. And so it still has to do something with the learning and the acquisition of information, but it has something to do with the value of information. Um, whether something is uh, positive or negative. And finally, we come to serotonin. Serotonin is perhaps the most enigmatic one. Now, it's not always so easy to assign functions and roles, but these are, I would say, you know, the sort of uh, broad uh, painted canvas of what the neuromodulators do. And serotonin um, seems to be released during sleep, especially deep uh, wave, uh, slow wave sleep, so deep sleep. And uh, there are experiments also in invertebrates that show that serotonin seems to reduce the number of synapses or reduce the size of synapses and really to uh, synapse recycling. And so some of the um, interesting uh, serotonergic uh, neuromodulators that affect cognitive function, or rather not neuromodulators, but the drugs of abuse that um, affect cognitive function are things uh, like the hallucinogens, like uh, psilocybin and LSD and so on. And they seem to have a, quite a big role in releasing, um, increasing the release of serotonin. Uh, or in um, rather in acting or serotonergic receptors, um, mimicking the effect of serotonin. And so, um, what uh, f so from the cognitive point of view, because the neuromodulators also have um, non cognitive roles, uh, so from the cognitive point of view, serotonin seems to uh, lead to recycling of synapses. And so, during slow wave sleep, uh, it seems that some synapses become uh, reduced in size, or if they are weak already, they may be completely um, de degraded. So, uh, you know, they're removed from uh, from uh, between uh, neurons. And so these neurons no longer make those contacts after you wake up uh, because this happened to you slow wave sleep. Uh, and so this is relatively random, but because, you know, I mean, if you you can always predict what things are going to be like if they're familiar ones because you get exposed to them. Um, all the time. So every time you go out of your street, of your house into the street, I mean, you know what it's like. You won't uh, come out into the African savanna or something. You know what it's like because you see it every day. So it gets reinforced every day. So even though some of these synapses might get a little bit weakened during slow wave sleep, they get reinforced next day. So you don't forget it. You see your same, the same students, you see your teacher every time at school, you remember the names, you remember the faces, it might change clothes, but you recognize them. However, if uh, 10 or 20 years pass by, you may no longer remember their names, you may no longer remember even the faces or what they looked like, where they were sitting in the class and, and so on. Um, and so um, you see that with time, even things that you had experience of every day uh, for years and years perhaps, um, get eventually um, lost. Uh, if enough time goes by, and this is what serotonin does. Uh, it recycles synapses, so synapses uh, become disused and no longer being used. So every day, every night, a little bit of it goes away and eventually you lose complete memory of some of th some things that you, you used to know very well uh, once upon a time. So that was my summary of the neuromodulators. Thank you for watching.